Hello, I just worked out I could be one of those really crazy vloggers that do really silly stuff like this. <laughs> I better kick off with this title because we'll be seeing some strobing lights in this video. And this is my odyssey into trying to fix some very inexpensive LED lights. I purchased three and there were two which were faulty. And in doing this fix, I've uncovered some things that I possibly never wanted to see. On with the video. Because we live in a crazy mixed up world, I've got to put this title up. Well, because I'm a fairly curious sort of person and I did do a video about these very inexpensive LED lights, which two of them had failed me, I think it's worthwhile going in and having a closer look at what's going on so we can all learn something about these lights and how to fix them. Well, this is the info that I see on the bottom of these LED lights. And there's a look at the item serial number. And one thing to note is the C is on the clamp style. The one with the weighted base has no C. And there's also this other curious warning. The external flexible cable or cord of this Illuminaire cannot be replaced. If the cord is damaged, the Illuminaire should be destroyed. Don't be scared off thinking you can't find any screws to undo these. They're just a little bit hidden. I'll show you where. To find the screws that hold this together, it's a matter of levering this lens off. And then what you'll find are two screws in here, and then you can pull the LED unit out. Up the other end, and this is the weighted base version, you take the foam off the bottom, you'll find two screws there. Once the screws are taken out, that'll expose the bottom component of the light, and you can pull out the area where the power, the low voltage power, jacks into the light. You can tell a lot about the quality of an item just by looking at the soldering joints and the way something's been assembled. From looking at the solder there, I think we can start to see where this video is going. There's the array of five LEDs and there's a small circuit board behind which connects all of these LEDs up to the low voltage power. Well here's the back of the light and we can see the power comes in here and then the legs from each LED are represented here. Remembering there's five, there's no resistors in this circuit that I can see. But remember, I'm also a bit of a dum-dum of electronics. Well, here we are looking really closely at that little circuit. And there's some gooby gump there, which I don't know what that is. It's soft. Uh, stuff has gone on here. I don't know whether that's flux or, or what that is. This is the flashing strobing light. Maybe if I turn it on and have a bit of a prod around, we can see where the problem is coming from. Well, as you can see, the light's on and it's still doing its strobing and messing about. But I don't know, I just don't like the look of what's going on here. It's funny, I look inside some toys. Some toys have really nice work and good soldering jobs. And you look inside some of the fake toys and you can tell straight away it's from a totally different realm of China. What I might do first is come in and try and clean the back of this up a bit. See if that's causing any of the problems. And with the power off, I'm going to come in with a soldering iron and touch up these solder joints. Well, I went round and I re-soldered all those posts and where the power comes in on this little board. And what was very interesting was I started the voltage check and chased the current around to see where there was some anomalies. And I found there was an anomaly going on between these two posts here and if I short it out look what happens the light comes on and it stays on and if I turn around you can see that one of those LEDs is non-functional I'm just shorting out the legs behind it so I'm wondering now whether the LED or one of those LEDs is defective and what's interesting is after I do a short circuit the flashing tends to become very irregular like it doesn't like it but if I come in a little bit of Freon I can uh, cool it down and it goes back to rapid flashing. So what I'll do quite simply is I'll desolder this LED off the circuit and I think I've got an LED here that I'll throw in just to see if I can get the array to be stable and stay on. Most people wouldn't even attempt to come in and fix this. I'm just a hopeless aren't I? <laughs> just seen how bad I am. Well here's the LED out of that little light array. And I did a bit of reading in the wiki page and it was really all over my head because I don't understand electronics. But the way I look at them, I believe there's a positive and negative um, pole here or terminals. I just look at the inside and I look at the other lights in the array to work out which way this should go back in. Or if I find another replacement. Um, 
yeah, who knows? I thought these things were reliable. Who knows about LEDs and why they fail? Is over temperature in soldering a failure point? Or are you just get unlucky every now and then? And here's a little circuit board, of course, missing that LED. Now, if I come in and short that, I can get the light to work. I'm pretty sure if I throw an LED in there, I'll get my little array back up and running. Well, luckily I have got spare LEDs laying about in the workshop. And I don't even know whether they're the same rating or power or whatever or color. There's a billion and one variations on LEDs. And they've got two different length legs. I think that has something to do with their polarity or the way they sit in the circuit. Like I said, I'm talking a whole bunch of rubbish here because I don't know what I'm looking at. <laughs> Hopefully I'm fixing. Hopefully I'm empowering those people who think they don't know what they're doing but they can still fix. Um, that's very much where I'm at in this world. <laughs> and if I poke the LED through the correct side, hopefully in the right, right polarity, <clears throat> there it is, up and running. Maybe I'll go and solder that in, cut the legs off. And remembering here, I am fixing a El Cheapo $15 light that I bought in Kmart, which malfunctioned. Well, I've soldered that LED in. It's a bit of a gooby job because I'm a bit of a gooby person. But I've saved my gooby voice from going down to Kmart asking for my money back on a very gooby light. And from memory, I think I paid for the LED, I think it was 3 or $4. So the economy of fixing this doesn't look good if you're living here in Australia. I'm probably better off running off and just buying a whole new light. Well, here we are looking at the lights. Of course, looking down the front and they're on. Exposure's closed right up now. And the light at the top is the one that I replaced. I think it's a slightly different hue in colour. It's more blue than the lights which were already in this light, or Illuminaire. Um, look like the same brightness, I think, although it's very hard to tell. I'm not a, I am not haven't got a good eye for LEDs. Well, at least I'm not giving people epileptic fits with strobing lights. And it looks like I can go outside tonight and shoot a kooky UFO video. If I got that spinning right and put a bit of fake and gay story around it, I could be on a winner. It's also worth noting to fix these little $15 lights, I need a couple of hundred dollars worth of tools to do a fix. I dare say you're wondering about the other light, which was fairly dim. Well, let's have a little close look at that one. As I said a bit earlier about these lights, you can tell a lot about how something is made and the quality of workshop by looking at the solder joints. So let's have a look at the join where the power comes in. Well, there's a power jack for this light, and there's the plug. And there's a solder join. Now that is a really, really good example of very, very poor workmanship. Let's have a very close look at what's going on there. Well, I suppose the big loophole here is this is a low voltage unit. But there's no way I want to be buying electrical goods which have this extremely low quality of workmanship. This is a $15 light bought at Kmart in Australia. And I don't think anyone deserves to have this sort of stuff floating around in their home. Well, this is the back of the LED array, which was in the light, which was very dim. It did start off its life being quite bright. I've checked the voltage coming in here. It's certainly got 15 volts. I've gone and resoldered each of the pins on the LEDs, thinking that might have been a bad solder joint. I can't get this array to be any brighter. I suspect, and I really don't know, that one of these LEDs is somehow hanging up the circuit and it's causing havoc. Um, it's something that the audience are probably going to be able to tell me about. I'm not an electronics wizard uh, and I'm certainly not going to go to the time and hassle of replacing each LED. I will just class this light as a write-off. Well I've seen enough here to scare me right off buying this cheap Chinese junk. Seems that shops are addicted to getting this stuff in these days. And I'll tell you what, I'll be a much more careful shopper from now on after finding out a little bit more about the lights than I really wanted to know. Well, while I'm putting this uh, light back together, I can have a few words to say about my thoughts of made in China stuff. And I mean, what's, what I'm seeing here is what I'm seeing all the time is one little component of this light becomes a thing that brings it down, it makes it fail. And you see this over and over uh, with Chinese stuff. And I brought that up in a, another video and I gave examples of the one little thing that brings a whole unit down. And I think everyone's addicted to cheap Chinese goods. I certainly am. I can't resist the temptation of buying something very inexpensive. But in the back of my mind, 
I know there's a very good chance I'm going to be bitten by them and I've got to rely on the fact that luckily I'm the sort of person who can go in and hopefully fix things up especially if it's a mechanical problem I've got no problem fixing that um, I'm always fighting if there's an electronics problem this is a very basic failure in my sense in the electronics world an LED which was gone wrong and you know I did some reading up on LEDs and the part that they say is that they're really reliable and it's very rare that you get a failure um, they do fail over time from what I was reading but um, I mean here's a device that I've just picked up and it has showed failure within the first few weeks of having it and it really wasn't on ever on that much and um, I don't know maybe like I said maybe I'm just one of the unluckiest consumers in the world uh, I always feel that I am I'm, I'm struggling to work out how to put this back together should have taken more uh, I should have taken more care when I was pulling it apart but uh, I'll come back to that bit later on <laughs> you can't fix it now well don't fix it at all the um oh, I should check if it still works before I go any further oh, oh it's bright <laughs> at least it's working now thank you Kmart um, and just on, on Kmart and I know a lot of people from the USA uh, watch my stuff and they're probably a bit perplexed because I normally never get into stuff like this or technology or anything try to steer well clear of it and leave it to people who know what they're talking about but Kmart in Australia is nothing like Walmart in the USA I think I could be correct in saying it used to be uh, many years ago I'm old enough to remember when Kmart had sporting sections you could buy guns there and ammunition who else can remember that and Kmart had those sort of things that had really good auto sections and it had white goods all sorts of stuff and Kmart has very much changed it's well I think this product here is a very very classic example of what they're into they're into really really cheap stuff made in China and the big gamble is is how long will it last and I've just showed you that I mean I could have rightfully as a consumer taken this back and said look this light has malfunctioned remembering I bought three of these lights two of them showed a malfunction uh, I've got within my rights as a consumer to take those back but I'm also like to talk about consumer affairs on my YouTube channel and it's something that I'll always cross over to it's my adult side you might say what I do although YouTube seems to struggle with adult themes but hopefully all of the younger audience that I do uh, communicate with in years to come when they've grown up they can say wow that that dude Leo guy some of the things he was saying was potentially correct as they, as they sit at home trying to fix their made in China stuff but who knows the future may hold a totally different story here um, the stuff from China may become horribly good I mean it's who's going to look into that crystal ball you're never ever going to know uh, I mean I'm old enough also to remember that when I was younger when I bought stuff it was made in the UK made in Japan um, made in the USA uh, you rarely ever see that anymore uh, I, I'm actually going to pull a video about that about the things that I've got around the house which are made um, from countries other than than China and the fact that all of this stuff has lasted a very very long time and when I say long time it's old enough that you can pass it down to another generation and <laughs> there's no chance I'd be passing this light down um, across to my, my son or daughter it's I don't think that's ever going to happen it'll be in the bin well before that ever happens but um, it's interesting yeah you know and I mean single a single component failure creating something to stop working it can happen to uh, not just Chinese stuff there's that story about Rolls-Royce with their engine the Trent and that Qantas plane which had the one inside the engine there was that one component that was manufactured just a little bit wrong and it was a very important component um, uh, delivering oil to a certain part of the engine of course it caused a catastrophic engine failure and luckily the the A380 the Qantas A380 limped back to Singapore after one of the engines totally uh, exploded so saying and, and hinting on China all the time it's, it's it's a bit bad because it can happen to anyone it can one component failures can have a ripple on effect um, 
which is quite astonishing sometimes. And there was something that one of the, uh, the YouTubers commented on the video when I first initially showed these three lights. And they talked about a process of called tin whiskers. And it's all linked to solder, which has no lead in the solder and the consequences of that. And I'll tell you what, when I did a bit of reading of the NASA document that was created from that, <laughs> and tin whiskers is basically uh, disabled satellites. It's created accelerators to be stuck on in Toyota cars. It's amazing stories connected to tin whiskers. Amazing read on the NASA document. I'll hopefully have it in the link in this video. But um, always check the light still works. <laughs> Thank you. Finish putting it back together. But um, I think that's the beauty of YouTube is I can show something. Hopefully you can learn from the way that I fix things. Remember, I'm not a, 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 an electronics person in any way, but I do like to tinker and try and work out why things go wrong. And the best thing about YouTube is that people can leave comments and their knowledge can be passed across. And it's you've got to have the faith, well, this, what does this person know what they're talking about? And quite often, if you go back to their channel, you can see the sort of person that they are. In a sense, they expose who they are by the type of content that they upload. And that's what I do a lot when I was trying to suss out what someone's like. I go and look at the videos that they've uploaded and uh, quite often exposes the sort of person that they are, the work they've done in life. Uh, I'm still failed here because I can't get this, this lens on. I think I've been China again. But um, probably blabbered on a bit too long here. Maybe you've learned something. Maybe you've learned nothing. Um, it's one of the, oh, there we are. It's more like it. You hear something go snap. It usually means it's in. Anyway, I better leave it at that. One component failures made in China. Keep an eye out for it. In years to come, you'll say, geez, I remember that guy talking about that. And here I am sitting at home with all this stuff which doesn't work. Hmm, how big is it? Tell me your thoughts on this sort of thing and if it's going to get better or worse in time. Anyway, thanks for watching. Remember, I'm not a vlogger. In no way am I a vlogger. And goodbye.